not the plug. <laughs> There's something else. Never mind. I fix it myself. <laughs> he tells me to plug. When he calls me Mr. Clock, I'll tell him it was the plug. Wait a minute. Wait a 
I'm locked in. The lock is broken. Go downstairs and tell the boy. Tell Sandy. Tell him Mr. Clock is locked in. What is it, the lad? It's the lad. It's broken. I'm locked in. Go downstairs and tell the boy. He'll get somebody. That happened last week. But don't try to force it. Just slide it out. Do you hear me, Uncle Willie? Don't force it. Slide it out. Wait a minute. I fixed it. Well, you probably have to oil. I don't got to oil nothing to hell with it. What happened to you? Well, you touched football with the Kennedys again, huh? I don't want to talk about it. Never mind me. Are you feeling all right? What is it, Wednesday? Certainly it's Wednesday. Don't it always come on Wednesdays? But this is Wednesday today. Yes, of course. Haven't you been out? When? Today, yesterday, all this week. I was out Sunday. I, I went to the park on Sunday. What are you looking for? My variety. I just gave it to you. It's up to your arm. <laughs> what did you put it there for? He puts it under my arm. <laughs> oh. Have you been eating properly? No corned beef sandwiches, I hope. Is this today's? Certainly it's today's. Variety comes out on Wednesday, doesn't it? And today's Wednesday. I'm just asking, don't get excited. Because I already read last Wednesday's. I've got you six different kinds of soup. All of them low sodium salt free. All of them very good for you. Are you listening? I heard, I heard you got six lousy tasting soups. <laughs> Did you see this? What? What I'm looking at. Did you see this? How do I know what you're looking at? Two new musicals went into rehearsal today. I didn't even get an audition. Why didn't I get an audition? Because there were no parts for you. The one of them is a young rock musical, and the other show is all black. What's the matter? I can't do black? <laughs> <laughs> I did black in 1928. When I did black, you understood the words. Not like today. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. You're not the kind of black you're looking for. Jeez. Oh, it's cold in here. It's freezing in here. Don't they ever send up any heat? How do you like that? Saul Burton died. Who? Saul Burton, the songwriter. 89 years old, went like that for nothing. Why did you put on a sweater? I knew him well. He was a terrible person. <laughs> Me. Me. He was a mean person. He should rest in peace. Why, he was a mean person. Even his best friends didn't like him. <laughs> Why is it so cold in here? You know what kind of songs he wrote? The worst. The worst songs ever written were written by Saul Burton. Lady, lady, be my baby. Did you ever hear anything so rotten? Lady, he rhymes with baby. No wonder he's dead. This radiator is ice cold. Look, Uncle Willie, I'm not going to let you live here anymore. You've got to let me find you another place. I've been asking you for seven years now. You're going to get sick. Tom Jones is going to get $100,000 a week in Las Vegas. When Lewis and I headlined at the palace, the palace didn't cost $100,000. <laughs> well, that was 40 years ago. And 40 years ago, this apartment was 20 years old. They should tear it down. They take advantage of all you people because they know you just don't want to move. No cigars. You're not supposed to have cigars. Where's well, a cigar? You know the doctor told you that you're not supposed to smoke cigars. I didn't bring any. Give me the cigars. What cigars? I just said I didn't bring them. Will you forget the cigars? Where are they? In the back? They're on the bottom. And I've just bought three, and it's the last time I'm doing it. Well, how's the family? The children's okay? Suddenly you're interested in my family? It's not going to work, Uncle Willie. I'm not bringing you any more cigars. I just wondered how the children are, that's all. The children are fine. They're wonderful, thank you. Good, next time bring the big cigars. <laughs> you don't even know their names. What are the names of my children? Millie and Sydney. Amanda and Michael. What about you? You didn't like Millie and Sydney? I was never going to name them Millie and Sydney. 
you, you forgot, so you made something up. Uncle Willie, you forget everything. I bet you didn't drink the milk from last week. I bet it's still in the refrigerator. Sure enough, here's the milk from last week. Don't I know who I am? Who? Amanda and Sydney. Amanda and Michael? That you were a big star in vaudeville? They're three years old, Uncle Willie. Do you think they remember vaudeville? I never saw vaudeville. That refrigerator's not going to last another two days. Oh, did you tell them six times on the Ed Sullivan Show? They never heard of Ed Sullivan. They're three years old, Uncle Willie. Do you think they followed? What are you doing? You're not going to smoke that now. You promised me only we were going to smoke one and after dinner. Am I smoking it? Do you see smoke coming from this cigar? You got it in your mouth. I'm rehearsing. <laughs> after dinner, I'll do the show. <laughs> I'm in the most aggravating business in the whole world, and I never get aggravated until I come here. So don't call I got Social Security. Oh. You think that's funny? I don't think that's funny, Uncle Willie. If you had a sense of humor, you would think it was funny. I have a terrific sense of humor. Like your father. He left once in 1932. <laughs> I can't talk to you. Why, they're funny today? You tell me who you think is funny, I'll show you where he's not funny. Look, Uncle Willie, I gotta get back to the office. Just promise me that you'll eat a decent lunch today. If I were to tell a joke and it got a laugh from you, I'd throw it out. How can I laugh at you, Uncle Willie, when I see you like this? You sit all day in your pajamas in a freezing apartment. <laughs> you watch soap operas on a $35 television set that doesn't have a horizontal hole. The picture just keeps rolling from top to bottom. <laughs> Pretty soon your eyes are going to be rolling around in your head. You never eat anything anymore. You don't go outside because you don't know how to use the lock on the door. Well, remember when you locked yourself in the bathroom overnight? Why, it's a lucky thing that you keep bread in there or you would have starved to death. <laughs> and you wonder why I worry? Calvin Coolidge! That's your kind of humor. Look, Uncle Willie, just promise me that you'll eat decently. I'll eat decently, I'll wear a blue suit, a white shirt, and black shoes. Well, if you're waiting to get a laugh from me, you're not going to get one. Who could live that long? <laughs> get me a job instead of a laugh. You know what? Try. It's not that easy. There's not much work in town, and most of it is in commercials, and we all know you've had a little trouble in that area. The potato chip? The potato chips wasn't my fault. Forget the potato chips. Yeah, well, what about the chick injector? Didn't I audition funny for the chick injector? You were very funny, but your hand was shaking. You can't show a man shaving with a shaky hand. <laughs> Why can't you get me out and help yourself, sir? That's my kind of comedy. I got a terrific face for an upset stomach. <laughs> I've submitted you 20 times. What's the matter with 21? Because word is out in the business that you can't remember your lines, and they're simply not interested. I can't remember the lines? I can't remember the lines? I don't remember that. <laughs> For the Frito Lays. I sent you over to the studio, and you couldn't even remember the address. Don't tell me I didn't remember the lines. The lines I remember beautifully. The name of the potato chip I couldn't remember. What was it? Frito Lays. Say it again. Frito Lays. I still can't remember it because it's not funny. If it's funny, I remember it. Elk is funny. You say elk is you're going to laugh. That other one is not funny. What is it? Frito Lays. Yeah, maybe in Mexico that's funny. <laughs> not here. 57 years I'm in the business, you learn a few things. You learn what makes an audience laugh. You know which words are funny and which words are not funny? You've told me a hundred times, Uncle Willie. Words with a K in it are funny. I bet you didn't know that, did you? If it doesn't have a K in it, it's not funny. I'll tell you which words always get a laugh. Chicken. Chicken is funny. Pickle. Pickle is funny. Cupcake. 
do this for me. I'm not asking you two to be partners again. If you don't get along, that's all right. It's just for one night, one show. Once you get exposure like that, Elka Seltzer will come begging to me to sign you up. Jesus, how is it going to look like if I go back to the office and tell him that I can't even make a deal with my own uncle? My personal opinion? Lousy. <laughs> Do you really hate Al Lewis that much? I don't discuss Al Lewis. But we have to discuss him. Because CBS is waiting for an answer today. And if we're going to tell them we're not doing it, we better have a pretty good reason why. You haven't seen him in what? Ten years now? Eleven years. You mean you haven't spoken to Al Lewis in eleven years? I haven't seen him in eleven years. I haven't spoken to him in twelve years. <laughs> you mean you saw him for a whole year that you didn't speak to him? It wasn't easy. I had to sneak around backstage a lot. <laughs> but you spoke to him on stage. Not to him. If he played a gypsy, I spoke to the gypsy. If he played a lunatic, I spoke to the lunatic. But that bastard I didn't speak to. Oh, I can't believe that. You don't believe me? I can show you witnesses who saw me never speaking to him. <laughs> it's better. Hasn't time changed anything for you? Yeah. I hate him 11 years more. <laughs> Why? Why? You never met him? Well, sure I met him. I met him at that benefit at Madison Square Garden, and oh, I was about 15 years old, and once backstage at some television show, he seemed nice enough to me. That was only twice. You had to meet him three times to hate him. <laughs> Uncle Willie, could I make a suggestion? He used to give me the finger. What? The finger. The finger! He used to poke me in the chest with a finger and say, Listen, doctor, I'm telling you, doctor. You know what I mean, doctor? Oh. Hurts, doesn't it? Yes. How'd you like that for 43 years? <laughs> I got a black and blue hole in my chest. My wife, for a dying day, thought it was a tattoo. <laughs> I haven't worked with him in 11 years. It's just beginning to fade away. The man had the sharpest finger in show business. If you work together, I promise. I'll buy you a thick padded undershirt. You think I never did that? One night I put a steel plate under my shirt. <laughs> he gave me the finger and had it in a split for a month. <laughs> There's something else must have happened that you're not telling me about. You don't work with somebody for 43 years without some <coughs> kind of affection remaining. You want to hear other things? He used to spit in my face. Not on purpose? On stage, the man would spit in my face. No, not on purpose. What do you think, he's stupid? He walked into the act. He would stand with his nose on top of my nose and purposely say words that began with a T. Tootsie roll. Tinker paw. Typing on the typewriter. Some nights I thought I would throw. I don't know where he got it all. I think he would drink all day and save it up for the night. I'll put it in the contract. If he spits at you, he won't get paid. If he could get another chance to spit at me, he wouldn't want to get paid. <laughs> all right, will you answer me one question? If it was all that bad, why did you stick together for 43 years? Because he was terrific. There'll never be another one like him. Nobody could time a joke the way he could tell the joke. Nobody could say a lie the way he could. He knew what I was thinking. I knew what he was thinking. One person, that's what we were. No. El Lewis was the best. The best, you understand? I understand. As an actor, nobody could touch him. As a human being, no one wanted to touch him. <laughs> so what do I tell CBS? No deal because Al Lewis fits? You know when the last time was we worked together? Eleven years ago on the Ed Sullivan Show. Eleven years ago on the Ed Sullivan Show. <laughs> July 27th. He wouldn't put us out in the winter when people were watching, but never mind. We did the doctor and the tax examination sketch. You never saw that one, did you? No, but I heard it was wonderful. What, what about a classic? A classic, I'm telling you. 
A dead person watching that routine would laugh. We, we did it maybe 8,000 times. It never missed. That night, it missed. There was something wrong with him. He was, he was rushing. His timing was off. His mind was someplace else. I, I thought he was sick. Still, we got terrific applause. Five times, Ed Sullivan says, how about that? <laughs> we went down to the dressing room. He took off his makeup, put on his clothes. And he said to me, Willie, if it's all the same to you, I'm retired. I said, what do you mean retiring? It's not even 9 o'clock. Let's get something to eat. He said, I'm not retiring for the night. I'm retiring for what's left of my life. He put on his hat, walked out of the theater, and became a stockbroker. I'm left with an act where I ask questions and there's nobody there to answer. I never saw the man again to this day. He called, I wouldn't answer. He wrote, I tore it up. He sent telegrams, they're probably still under the door. <laughs> well, with all due respect, Uncle Willie, you weren't getting that much work anymore anyways. And, I mean, maybe he was tired of doing the same thing for 43 years. I mean, the man has a right to retire when he wants to. Not him, don't forget. When he retired himself, he retired me too, and God damn it, I wasn't ready. Sure, now maybe he needs $5,000 who wants to come crawling back. I say to Helen, I'm a single now. I spoke to Al Lewis on the phone last night. He doesn't even care about the money. He just wants to do the show for old time's sake, for his grandchildren, who never saw it. Sure, he probably retired broke from the stock market. I guarantee you, those high class people never got a spit in the face once. Did you know his wife died two years ago? He's living in New Jersey with his daughter son. He doesn't do anything anymore, will he? He's got arthritis, he's got asthma, he's got poor blood circulation. I'll send him a bump. <laughs> He'll outlive you. He wants very much to do the show, will he? With arthritis? Forget it! Instead of a finger, he'll poke me with a cane! <laughs> <laughs> CBS launched into the doctor sketch. <coughs> Someone said he could get up on any stage tonight and do that sketch letter perfect. He doesn't even need to rehearse it. I don't even want to discuss it. Well, and in the second place, I definitely wouldn't do it without a rehearsal. All right, then. Will you agree to this? Rehearse with him for one day. If it doesn't work, we'll call it off. I, I, I don't trust him. I, I think he's been planning this. He's, he's been setting me up for 11 years. We rehearse all week, and then he walks out on me right before the show. Let me call him on the telephone. I'll set up a rehearsal time for Monday. Wait a minute, I gotta think about this. I'm dialing him. I'm dialing him, okay, Willie? All right. 6040. I get 6,000, he gets 4,000. What the hell can he buy in New Jersey anyway? God, I can't do that, Willie. I hope this works out. And, uh, and tell him I'm against it. I, I want him to know that I'll do it. With an against. <laughs> it's ringing. And he's got to come here. I'm not going there. You understand? Tell him that. He's got to be home. I told him I called about one. Sure, you know what he's doing. He's practicing spitting. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Mr. Lewis? Ben Silverman here. Fine, thank you. Yeah, Uncle Willie's right here. Willie Clark, the one he left on the Ed Sullivan show. Ask him if he remembers. No, it's okay, Mr. Lewis. Uncle Willie said yes. With an against it, don't forget the against it. No, he's very anxious to do it. Who's anxious? I'm against it. Tell him, you lousy nephew. Uh, can you come here for rehearsal on Monday sometime? Oh, that'll be swell. Uh, how about in the morning? Sometime about, say, 11 o'clock? How long is the drive for you? About two hours? Make it 9 o'clock! Be reasonable, Willie. Yeah, that would be great. 11 o'clock. Um, can you give me your address so that I can send you the contracts? 191 
South Pleasant Drive. Tell him if he starts with the spitting and the poking, I'm taking him to court. I'll have a man on the show watching him. Tell him. West Davenport, New Jersey, 44077. I don't want any toy telephones typing on Teen Turtles. Tell him. You're not backing out. 
I don't care what excuse you make. You're gonna go through with this. You promised me you'd give it one day. I'll pick another day. Today! You are gonna meet with him and rehearse with him today. Now just stop it and behave yourself. What do you mean behave yourself? Who do you think you're talking to? Susan and Jackie? Jackie and Michael. I mean Amanda. <laughs> Whatever. I wish I worked like a reason with them. Now I'm getting chest pains on a Monday. <laughs> anyway, he's late. He's purposely coming late to aggravate me. He's not late. It's two minutes after 11. What is he, early? He's late, I'm telling you. You're looking to start trouble, I can tell. I was up and dressed at 8 o'clock. Don't tell me. Why didn't you shave? Get me the shit commercial and I'll shave. <laughs> I really think I got hepatitis. Look how green I look! <laughs> you don't get green from hepatitis. Maybe. You get yellow. Maybe I got a really bad case. Now I'm nervous. I wonder if I should call him. <coughs> Maybe he's sick. Sure, you believe he's sick, but me, you don't believe. Why don't you become his nephew? That's him. Do you want me to get it? Get what? I didn't hear anything. All right. Just behave yourself. Take it easy and give it a chance. Promise me you'll give this a chance. I'll give it every possible chance in the world, but it's not going to work out. <laughs> well, where are you going? To make some tea. I feel like some hot tea. Now? Now? Ah, Mr. Lewis. How do you do? Hello. I'm Ben Silverman. How are you? Good, good. Uh, can I take your hand? Thank you. We met a long time ago. I, I can't remember the theater. I, I went there with my father. It must have been 15 or 20 years ago. Sure, I remember. It was backstage maybe 15, 20 years ago. I forget the name of the theater. That's right. <laughs> Certainly, I remember. Uh, please, have a seat. Thank you. Uncle Willie's making some tea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you have any trouble getting in from New Jersey? My daughter drove me. She has a car. That's nice. 1972 Chrysler. Oh, the Chrysler's a wonderful car. The big one, the Imperial. I know, I drove it. My daughter's car? Oh, the big Chrysler Imperial. I rented one in California. Oh, she owns. Take <laughs> <laughs> it to New York, carry on. Today is the first time in two years. Really? And how did you find it? Yeah, my daughter drove <laughs> No. I mean, did you find it different in, in the two years since you were here last? Uh, it's not my New York. No, I suppose not. Hey, Mr. Lewis, I just want to tell you how excited I am about all of this. For that matter, everybody in the industry is. We'll see. Uncle Willie, Uncle Willie, how are we doing? <laughs> <laughs>
props for the doctor stage. You gotta have props. All right, props. What do you need? I'll tell you. We need a desk, a telephone, a pointer, a blackboard, a piece of white chalk, a piece of red chalk, a skeleton, not too tall, a stethoscope, a thermometer, an eye stick. What's an eye stick? For your mouth to say ah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, an eye stick. A look stick, a pop Wait. of pills. What's a look stick? A stick to look in the ears with cotton on it. Right, a look stick. A bottle of pills, big ones, and for a horse. About this big? No, that's for a pony, like this. Horse. <laughs> cotton, some bandages, and eye chalk. Wait a minute, you're going too fast. A desk. <laughs> a a pointer. No, I got all that. After the cotton and the eye chart? A man suit. Size 46, like the one I got. Also a gray? Who needs two gray suits? Make it a brown. <laughs> right, a brown suit. Anything else? That's all. A piece of liver! <laughs> That's all, plus a piece of liver. What kind of liver? Regular liver. Like from regular calf liver, like from the butcher. About how much? A pound? A pound? That's a little lad. Two pounds is a big lad. Three pounds with a lot of blood will bring the house down. <laughs> is that it? That's it. Oh, and a blonde. You mean a woman? You know a blonde nurse that's a man? <laughs> big. Big as you can find. With a big chest. 40, 45. And a nice body. Ah, oh, you mean a sexy girl with a big, full, round rear end? Like this. This is too small. This is too big. <laughs> this, perfect. I know what you mean. You bring me some pictures. I'll pick one out. Well, there's a million girls around like that. Uh, the one we had was the best. I can recall, but now she's maybe 55, 60. Uh, no, no, I got the girl. Anything else? That's it. Uncle Willie? I wasn't listening. <laughs> well. Mr. Lewis, I just can't express how happy this is making me. And I just want to thank you for all the young people in this world who have never had the opportunity of seeing Lewis and Clark. I just want to say thank you to the both of you. To the both of you, Uncle Willie. I just hope they won't be disappointed. Oh, they won't be. I know they won't. I'm just saying. Uncle Willie, I'm leaving. I'll show you to the elevator! No, that won't be necessary. I'll call you later. I just want to tell you that this is a very happy moment for me. Seeing both of you together, reunited, the two kings of comedy. This must be very exciting for both of you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs>
Sogo! If you got. I got, Sogo.
swing out the yard, a little doghouse, a rock garden. A what? A rock garden. What do you mean a rock garden? You mean for rocks? You never saw a rock garden? And I'm not that anxious. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Chinaman made it. Someday you'll take a bus, you'll come out and visit, and I'll show it to you. I should drive all the way out to New Jersey on a bus to see a rock garden. Uh, you have no idea what I'm talking about. You have to live in the country to appreciate it. I never thought I could be so happy living in the country. You don't mind it's so quiet? They got noise in New Jersey. <laughs> but it's a quiet noise. The birds are drizzling. Not like here with all the buses and the trucks and the yelling and the screaming. Oh, that's different for you. You like the city because you're the country because you're retired. You can sit on a porch, look at a tree, watch a bush growing. You're not still active like me. You've got a different temperament. You're a slow person. <laughs> I'm a slow person? You're here 15 minutes already, you still got a whole cup of tea. I already finished mine. That's right. You're finished, I'm still enjoying mine. There's always the difference with us. You're wrong. I can get up and make a second cup of tea and enjoy it twice as much as you. I like a busy life. That's why I like living in the city. I gotta be near a telephone. I never know when a picture's gonna come up. A musical or a commercial. When did you do a picture? No negotiating. When did you do a musical? They're talking. When did you make a commercial? I do them all the time. I did one last week. For what? For a, for a what's it, you know. The, um, for the potato chips. What potato chips? The big one. You know, the crispy potato chips, you know. What do I know? I don't eat potato chips. What difference does it make what the name is? They hire you to sell their potato chips and you can't remember the name? <laughs> Did you remember Saul Burton? I'm not trying to sell Saul Burton. I don't want to argue with you. I didn't come all the way from New Jersey to argue with you either. So, what do you think? You want to do the doctor's sketch? Well, listen, it's pretty good money. It's only a couple of days' work I can be back in New Jersey. My feeling is if you want to do it, I'm agreeable. And my feeling they told you. What? They didn't tell you? My feeling is I'm against it. You're against it? Right. But I'll do it if you want to. I don't want to do it if you're against it. If you're against it, don't do it. What well, do you care if I'm against it? As long as we're doing it. I just want you to know why I'm doing it. Don't do me any favors. Who's doing you a favor? I'm doing my nephew a favor. This will be good for him in the business to, to do it. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. It's a big break for a kid like that to get a couple of big stars like us. Well, okay, in that, in that case, I'm against it too, but I'll do it. <laughs> as long as we understand each other. I just want you to know I'm not doing it for the money. The money goes to my grandchildren. The whole thing? The whole thing. But not now. Only if I die. If I don't die, it'll be for my old age. <laughs> The same with me. You don't have any grandchildren. My nephew's kids, Sydney and Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> so, you want to rehearse? You're not against rehearsing? Why would I be against rehearsing? I'm only against doing the show. Rehearsing is important. <laughs> All right. Well, Move the furniture and we'll make up the set.
That's right. You're fixing up this head for the doctor's sketch. <laughs> the doctor's sketch? <laughs> oh.
Then I'll come back in. We'll rehearse a couple times, then we'll call it a day. If my daughter comes, we'll all outside. Tell her to pick me up in an hour. <laughs> she can pick you up now for all I care. All right, knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. Don't say it, for God's sake, do it! I think he probably went crazy in the country. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready, all right. Knock, knock, knock. Come in. <laughs> all right, come in, all right. I won't open. Stop. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's the matter? Wait a minute. It's not locked. Wait a minute. It's locked. <laughs> Go downstairs and tell the boy. Tell Sandy it's locked. He'll get somebody. Let me try again. Don't waste time. You're wasting time. Go downstairs and get the boy Sandy. He'll get somebody to unlock it for you. <laughs> I fixed it. You didn't fix nothing. You don't know how to open a door. Did my daughter call while I was out there? No. I think you went crazy in the country. You gonna stand here and insult me or do you wanna rehearse? I'd like to do both, but we ain't got the time. <laughs> All right, forget the door. Stand in here and say knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. Enter! What do you mean enter? What happened to come in? It's the same thing, isn't it? Enter, come in, what's the difference as long as you're in? The difference, we've done this sketch 12,000 times. And it always starts with come in, not enter. Today, all of a sudden, it's enter. Why today, all of a sudden, are you changing it to enter? I'm trying to freshen up the act. <laughs> Who asked you to freshen up the act? They had for the doctor's sketch. They asked for the doctor's sketch, didn't they? The doctor's sketch starts with come in, not enter. You want to freshen something up? Put some flowers in this place. <laughs> it's a new generation, you know. This is not 1934 anymore. Really? I didn't get today's paper. What's bad about enter instead of come in? Because it's different. You know why we did it the same way for 43 years? Because it's good. And you know why we don't do it anymore? Because we've been doing it the same way for 43 years. So if we're not doing it anymore, why are we changing it? <sighs> you mind if I make a comment? Nothing personal. But, I think you've been sitting on a New Jersey porch too long. The hell does that mean? It means I think you've been sitting on a New Jersey porch too long. From my window, I see everything that happens in the world. I see old people, young people. I see good people, bad people. I see holdups, I see drug addicts, I see Car chases, ambulances, I see jumpers from buildings, I see everything! <laughs> you see a lawnmower and a milk bag. And that's why you want to say, enter instead of come in? <laughs> Are you listening to me? Why, there's somebody else in the room. <laughs> You don't know the first thing about what's going on today. All right. Tell me what's going on today. Did you ever hear the expression, that's where it is? Well, this is where it is, and that's where I am. <laughs> I see. Did you ever hear the expression, you don't know what the hell you're talking about? It's right in front of that other expression. You never knew what the hell you were talking about. <laughs> Listen, I'm not the one that retired. You retired. You know why? Because you were tired. You were getting old-fashioned. I was still new-fashioned. And I'll always be. Oh, I see. I see. That's why you do movies. You don't do it. That's why you're in music. You're not in. And that's why you make commercials you, can, you don't make because you can't remember them to make them. You know what I do remember? 
I remember what a pain in the ass you ought to work with. That's what I remember. That's right. That's right. And when you work with this pain in the ass, you lived in a five-room suite. Now you live in a one-room suite. And you're still wearing the same goddamn monkey <laughs> pajamas you wore in the five-room suite. <laughs> I don't got to take this crap from you. Ah, uh, you're lucky you're getting it. Nobody else wants to give it to you. Look, it, I don't want to argue. If you say knock, 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 I'm going to say enter. If you don't like it, you don't have to come in. You can't say anything without my permission. I own 50% of this act. Then say your 50%. I'm saying enter in my 50%. If you say enter instead of come in, I'm coming in all right, but not alone. I'm bringing a lawyer. Where? From New Jersey? <laughs> You're lucky if a cow comes with you. Against you in court, I could win with a cow. The finger! You're stuck with the finger again! Listen, I'm gonna tell you something right now. I didn't retire, I escaped! Next time you give me the finger, say goodbye to the finger! <laughs> Listen, I got a really good idea. Instead of working together one more time, let's never work together again. You're crazy. I'm crazy, yeah? I'm crazy? Keep saying it till you believe it. Well, I may be crazy, but you know what you are? You're senile! You know what that is, don't you? I'm not giving you any straight lines. Crazy means you got a couple of parts that go wrong. Senile means you went the hell out of the business. That's you, mister! <laughs> Hello? Is that my daughter? Hello, hi. Is that my daughter? Is that Will you shut up? Will you be quiet, please? Do you see me on the telephone with a voice in? Do you see me talking to For God's sake, can't you behave like a human being? For five seconds, can't you behave like a human being? Hello? Yes. Just a minute. It's your daughter. <laughs> Hello. Hello, sweetheart. No. No. I can't talk now. Because he's a crazy bed bug, that's why. Oh, mister is no good, but bed bug is all right. Your father's sick. Come and get your sick father. Can't you see I'm on the phone with a person here? For God's sake, behave yourself. Listen, listen, I want you to come and get me now. Wait for me downstairs. Don't park too close, though. This place is filthy. Listen, I know what I promised. I know what I said. I'm going to put on my coat and wait for you downstairs. Hurry, I'll probably get mugged. All right, wait a minute. Hold on. She wants to talk to you. Who oh, is it? <laughs> Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt. Who the hell do you think it is? Didn't you just say it's my daughter? I know it's your daughter. I forgot her name. Doris. What does she want? Am I Doris? She'll tell you. Tell her I'm going to record. Hello. Hello, dear. This is Willie Clark. Unpleasantness? No, there was no unpleasantness. Stupidity, maybe, but there was no unpleasantness. Tell her I got one sleeve on, then I'm going on to the hat. I was hoping it would work out too, darling, but uh, I bent over backwards and forwards. He wouldn't even bend sideways. Tell her I got my gloves and putting the hat on next. All it comes down to is one word. Enter. Enter. That's all it is. One word. Tell her I got the hat on. I'm all bundled up. I'll wait downstairs. All right, dear. I'll tell him. No, I'll tell him myself. I promise. I'll, 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 I'll tell him. All right. Goodbye, Dorothy. <laughs> I told her we'd give it one more chance. Not if you say enter. Come in. I'll stay. Enter. I go. Ask me not, knock, knock. Don't fool around with me. I got enough pains in my neck. Are you going to say come in or enter? Ask me knock, knock, knock. I know you, you bastard. 
Ask me, knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. 